بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد um, we return back to our book our sixth class in the book مقدمة مقدمة رسالة ابن أبي زيد القيرواني the introduction of the treaties of ابن أبي زيد القيرواني in his muqaddimah, his introduction is him establishing the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And we having our sixth class again. And we're supposed to start today from the text where the author says Ibn Abi Zayd al Qaidawani with the second or the last ending part of Ayatul Kursi, verse 255 of Surah Al Baqarah, where Allah Ta'ala says. وَسِعَ قُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says And his throne His throne Oh excuse me His footstool It encompasses the heavens and the earth and he is not worn out or tired in the preservation and guarding of the two of them, the heaven and earth. And he is the most high and the most great. He is the most high or the most and the most great. The most high, the most great. And then the author goes on, Al Alimu, to describe the other names of Allah. Al Alimu, the most the all knowing. Or Allah is the most knowledgeable. Al Khabiru, the All Knowing, Al Mudabbiru, the Arranger and Manager of the Universe, Al Qadiru, the All Capable, Al Sami'u, the All Hearing, Al Basiru, the All Seeing, Al Aliyu, Al Kabiru, the Most High, Al Kabir, the Magnificent. وَأَنَّهُ فَوْقَ وَأَنَّهُ فَوْقَ عَرْشِهِ الْمَجِيدِ بِذَاتِ And that he is above his glorious throne with himself. وَهُوَ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانٍ بِعِلْمِهِ And he is in every place with his knowledge. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ He created mankind. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ and he knows what the soul whispers to itself. وَهُوَ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ And he is closer to him, meaning mankind. And he is closer to him مِنْ حَبَلِ الْوَرِيدِ Than his own juggler vein. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ And there is not a leaf that falls. إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Except that he knows of it. وَلَا حَبَّهُ Nor a seed فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ In the darkness of the, of the earth وَلَا رَطَبٍ Nor that which is moist وَلَا يَابِسٍ Nor that which is dry إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Except that it is in a clear book Except that it is in a clear book so inshallah ta'ala This is what we're going to explain for today With the permission of Allah And what we're going to cover Will encompass five points From what we just read 
We're going to get five points from what we just read. Point number one is Al Iman Bil Kursi wa Annahu Haq. Believing in the footstool of Allah and that it is a true, is truth and it's real. Number two, Al Iman will be Asma'illah. Believing in the names of Allah. Number three, Al Arsh Haq. That the throne of Allah is the truth and real. Wal Adilla to Allah Dalik and the evidence for that. And number four, Sa'atu Ilmillah. The unending expansiveness of the knowledge of Allah. Wa Qudratuhu wa Ihatatuhu bi kulli shay. And his capability and his encompassing over all things. Over all things. He have capability over everything and he encompasses all things. And number five is Al Iman will be an Allah Kataba Filohi Mahfudi Kulla Shay. That we're gonna learn from this lesson that we have to have belief that Allah has written in the preserved tablet next to him on his next to him by his throne that he has written in it all things. There's nothing that occurs except that it's in the Loh Mahfud. Shallow Ta'ala. That's what we're gonna to try to cover today with the help and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we begin with the ayah. Well Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Wasi'a kursi yuhus samawati wal ar. And his throne, oh, excuse me, his footstool encompasses all things. His footstool encompasses all things. This or his footstool encompasses or covers the heavens and the earth. This particular ayah, ayah to kursi, walhamdulillah. We know the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we mentioned before, he said is the a'zamu ayah fil Qur'an. That it is the greatest verse that is in the Qur'an. Ayah to kursi is the greatest verse in the Qur'an. And that this verse, we've done khutbas, two khutbas on it here in this masjid, or I have. And in this particular verse, this ayatul, ayatul kursi, the verse of the footstool of Allah, that this verse is the only verse you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in it 17 times. Between the dhuma'ir, between the pronouns that is mentioned in this verse, Allah is mentioned in that one verse 17 times to show how this verse covers who Allah Taala wa ta'ala is. And it's incumbent for the believer to, to understand what this verse means. This verse is so great that Allah Ta'ala, because of his name being mentioned in it so much, that this verse protects us from the shayateen. When we recite this verse at night before going to bed. Likewise, it's such a great verse that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that going to entering the Jannah, there's nothing between you and Jannah. Whoever recites Ayat to Kursi, Dubara Kulli Salah, at the end of every prayer, at the end of every obligatory prayer, that whoever recites Ayat to Kursi, that they won't be, to, be between him and Jannah except death. They will not be between him and Jannah except death. So this is how amazing and powerful that this verse is. So it will be, it will behoove us, it will be uh, becoming of us to understand this verse and this tremendous virtue. Again, Allah Ta'ala is mentioned 17 times in that verse. 17 times in that verse. And at the end of that verse, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He mentions what the point of evidence that the author use here وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِ That they do not encompass anything of his knowledge إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ Except that which he wants And we explain that وَلَا يَأُودُهُ وَوَسِعَ كُرْسِ يُهُ السَّمَوَاتُ تِي وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَأُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمِ And his footstool covers the heavens and the earth 
His footstool covers the heaven and the earth. Is greater, is bigger than the heavens and the earth. His footstool. And he does not become worn out or tired from the preservation of these two things. Meaning the heavens and the earth. And he is the most high, the most great. Look how large the footstool of Allah is. Which can't even capitulate how big the throne of Allah is. Which therefore you can't capitulate how big Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The footstool of Allah encompasses the heaven and the earth. For this reason, the footstool is considered... It is the place for the two feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That he places there And Allah and Ibn Abbas He said He was the one who said It is the place The kursi is the place Of the two feet of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala And it is the greatest Creation of Allah, one of the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the throne. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Abbas narrated what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and we find the statement of Ibn Abbas narrated by Ibn Hibban in his Sahih, and also Abu Dhar, he narrated in a hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Messenger of Allah tried to give us. The ability to understand the greatness of the footstool of Allah He said in comparing the footstool to the heavens The seven heavens Allah Ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَا السَّمَاوَاتُ سَبْعُ فِي الْقُرْسِيِّ إِلَّا كَحَلْقَةٍ حَلَقَةٍ مُلْقَاتٍ فِي فَلَاتٍ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ He said that the what is the seven heavens in relation in comparison to the footstool except the likes of a ring a metal ring being thrown into an open desert in, on of the earth so in other words the heavens and the earth the seven heavens and all the planets in comparison to the footstool of Allah in size is like that of a ring being thrown into an open desert and the open desert of, of the earth would be like the throne the footstool of Allah and the heavens and earth would be like the ring would be like the ring in size so we can't even capitulate what the real size is once again this goes back to the point we made la yablughu kunha sifati sifatihil that those who wants to describe Allah cannot encompass the attribute of Allah. They cannot encompass the true reality of that. But here the Messenger of Allah has given us an idea, a, a wasf. He's given us a wasf, a description. But we cannot capitulate that. And then when we think about the throne, we can't capitulate the footstool. When we think about the throne of Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had talked about one of the eight angels that holds the throne of Allah. The distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is the journey of, I believe, when Hadith mentions 500 years of a person traveling 500 years. Now, no, it was 500. It could be a narration that says, but I'm not, so I never saw that. So, we understand that's the angel who holding the throne. Then how much more the throne of Allah How much more Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Who the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said Allah will hold the heavens, the earth and mankind And everything in the universe In a finger So we cannot compituate these realities of Allah But all of it posted in being a Direct all of us to a point And that's the point of making ta'zimullah Magnifying Allah in our hearts, in our minds, and in our life And we magnify Allah because you make ta'zim al-amir wa nahi The point of this is you to magnify the commander and the prohibitor Allah tabarak wa ta'ala 
Because if you magnify him to azimu awamirahu wa nawahihi, that you will magnify what he prohibits and what he commands with. And there are signposts for each believer to know that they have magnified the commander and the prohibitor, Allah, and then his messenger. And it's a signpost that you are magnifying the commandments of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah and his messenger. There's no way you can magnify and give high status what Allah commands and what he prohibits you from in your life. Except first you got to magnify the one who does the commanding and the, prohib prohib pro the prohibitions. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And here this information that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving us is supposed to cause us. To do that with Allah It's in it great It gives us There's nothing greater Nothing larger Allah is the Akbar There's nothing greater than Allah And this is what this hadith Is indicative to the, to the, to the fact So therefore it's upon the human being To believe that the footstool of Allah Is the place of his Two feet And that For Allah wa ta'ala And that We do not Ponder over how that is That's not the point But the point is to lead to you To understand What was been said To see the greatness of the one Who have created these things And to see the perfection in his creation Because the perfection in his creating Yadullu ala kamalillah These perfection in creation, in creation Is indicative to the, the perfection in, the, in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala And that so that you will not give anything a right that belongs to Allah and Allah alone tabarak wa ta'ala But rather nujri as-sifat kama sha' Allah wa arada But we only pass by the names and qualities and attributes of the things that is uh, related to Allah And the things he created that we have not seen we pass by them as we have been told and we leave it at, at that. We do need to wheel and without falsely interpreting them. Wala tashbih, nor resembling them to his creation. Like this, when it comes to Allah's names and attributes. But here Allah is talking about his creating, his creation, his greatest creation. Which is his throne and then his footstool. That these two things, magnificent, gigantic things, uh, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had informed us. Of the magnificence of them When Allah Ta'ala says That his footstool encompasses the heavens and the earth The messenger of Allah gave us more clarity Because he's been sent to interpret the Quran And he interpreted this by telling us That the heaven, what is the heavens, the seven heavens In comparison to the footstool Illa kehalaqatin mulqatin that what is it The heaven, seven heavens In comparison to the footstool Except that it is like A iron ring Being thrown into a open desert An open desert of, in, the, in the earth And the ring would be The heavens and the earth and the footstool of Allah would be the open desert in comparison. That is subhanAllah. And this, if this does not make you realize your provider is Allah. If this does not make us realize that we must be turning to Allah for all that which we are in need of. And all that which we want to ask for And all that which we want to fix in ourselves And all of that which we want to do of servitude to him And ask him to help us in that For these verses or these narrations Does nothing but bring confidence in these areas Of the belief of the Muslim And then Allah Ta'ala says And that he does not become weary or tired From the preservation and guarding of them The preservation here it means guarding it and preserving it. No one preserves our creation and this universe and everything in it except him. He preserves it and he protects it. And he protects it. This is why we can see a meteor. Scientists see gigantic meteors the size of earth 
flying in, in the our universe, but past our planet, never to come to our planet. And they make movies of it happening and hitting the planet. All of that to turn you away from the one who, who makes hev preservation of these things. All of that. These movies, TV, cartoons, all that stuff is to get you to disbelieve in the magnificence of Allah. This is why they got gods and they have false deities and they push these in these TV shows and movies and all those things. We comic books, all of that to decrease your magnifying of Allah and give him insignificance in one life. This is why the society is corrupted the way that it is, because Allah has, doesn't matter. He's just an idea. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is just whatever you want to imagine him to be. Not as he what he has revealed and sent his messengers to teach us to what he is and how we supposed to fathom what he is. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala sent Muhammad alayhi salatu salam and finalized prophecy with him and he established this reality. So when Allah Ta'ala says, Wala ya hifluhuma, that does not wear him out or tire him to preserving and the guarding of them, يعني لا يعجزه, doesn't weaken him, preserving. Wala yusqiluhu, nor is it a burden on him. The hiftu samawati wal ard, the preserving of and guarding of the heavens and the earth, wama bainahuma, and that which is between them and in them, wama fihima, and that which is in them, wama fihima, and all those that are in them. That Allah Taala does not get weary, nor get tired, nor is he occupied, nor is it to hinder him from doing all the other things that he does. Rather, all of that is for ease upon Allah. It is easiness, a highest level of easiness upon Allah because who al Khalik? He's the creator of every single thing. He is Al Qadir, the one who's fully capable over every single thing. La Yu'ajizuhu Shayun fil nothing in the heavens or the earth weakens him in the preserving of those things. Not in the earth nor in the heavens. And then Allah Ta'ala ends Al Ali, that Allah is Al Ali. And Al Ali, the Most High, is from the names, the beautiful names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that's taken from the Arabic word Ulu. It's taken from the Arabic word Al Ulu, and which means highness, loftiness. For Allah Taala is above all of His creation. So for that reason, we say Allah is Ulu Qadari. His capability is high and lofty and above everyone else's capability. Wa'ulu was sifati and his attributes and qualities above everyone else's attributes and qualities. Fala tu mathiluhu sifa tu makhluk. Never can be compared to him partially or completely anything of the attributes of his creation. So for that reason, the scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the scholars. Everyone from the first to the last of them, all of the ulama of i'tiqad of belief, they say that when Allah says He's Ali or A'la or Ali or A'la or Ali, He's the Most High. That this means His Highness, His Loftiness is in three ways, and this is agreed upon by the scholars of Ahl Sunnah with, with, with Jama'ah. Alu with that. The self of Allah is above of everything, right? Number two, ulu was shatin. The affair of Allah is lofty and above all affairs. We're going to explain each one. And number three, ulu wal qahr. Ulu wal qahr. And his power and control over everything is above. All is above everything. And we're going to explain each one of these uh, three things. Barakallahu fikum. Number one, when we say Allah is Ali, He is the Most High, the first thing is He's a Ulu, Ulu with that. The self of Allah is above, meaning He Himself is above every single thing, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in describing the noble angels and said about Himself. Allah ta'ala says, Ya khafuna rabbahum. What? Min him That they fear, talk about the angels, the noble angels, they fear their Lord from above them. 
they fear their Lord from above them. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ And they do what they have been commanded. And that's Surah Al-Nahl, chapter called the B, verse number 50. Allah Ta'ala also says, الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ stawa That the most merciful rose above the throne. He rose above the throne. And so when we talk about this, this is... Establish that Allah is ulu with that the self of Allah is above and there's nothing to be above him. The self of Allah. As the Messenger said in the previous narration, Wa anta zahiru wa laysa that you are the most high and there is nothing above you in the dua that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the previous classes we have mentioned. So when we say ulu with that, we mean the self of Allah. And no brothers and sisters, when Allah comes down to the lowest heaven to answer the dua in the last third of the night, that's in a mad magi- that's in a manner, Yaliku Jalalu, in a manner that is befitting of his majesty. Not in a manner that we understanding him coming to the lowest heaven, where your mind would think that the other heavens now is above Allah. The throne of Allah is above Allah. We don't think that because that's how we understand our descending. But the Nuzulullah, the descending of Allah, is not like our descending. So we say he's Ulu with that. The self of Allah is constantly and always above. This characteristic of Allah never separates from him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, Allah ta'ala is Ulu with Sha'an. The affair of Allah is lofty and above all other affairs. As Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Tashura, verse number 4, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Belongs to him that which is in the heavens and that which is in the earth. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ And he is the most high and the most great. And he is the most high and the most great. So Allah Ta'ala here is establishing belongs to him that which is in the heavens. Meaning he has control and power over that. So the affair of Allah is above all of all other affairs. Where no one else in the creation has this right. The president of the country has the right to implement the law but he's not above the law. The law is above him. But the affair of Allah is above all other affairs. So when we talk about that, this is how we understand about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lex ulu wal qahr. Wal wal That Allah has the lofty overpowering of things. His overpowering control over everything his, He's irresistible is that He's above everything And when it comes to power Nothing is more powerful and can overwhelm him But rather he overwhelms all things So when we say Allah is Al-Ali This encompasses all of that Which removes us from the understanding Of the Mu'tazila Those who remove this name They say these names of Allah that's mentioned in the Quran Don't have a meaning Because if we say they have a meaning We're resembling to Allah's creation La. His is perfect and his creations is imperfect. And we do not simulate them. But rather, we see Allah Ta'ala's ulu wal qahr. And in these three ways, his ulu will always be above any other highness, any other loftiness. And that is, Allah Ta'ala huwa aliyun an khalqi. Meaning Allah is above and way far from the needs of his creation. Wa ghalibun ala amri. And he has full control over his own affairs, no one else. La shay'a yusawihi, nothing is equal to him. Wala fi asma'ihi, wala fi sifatihi, wala fi af'alihi. Not in his names, not in his attributes, nor in his actions. For Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is ulu wal qahr in this area. Wal ghalaba. He is lofty in his conquering over everything and having power over all things. And then Ayatul Kursi ends. Al Azim, he is the most great or the most magnificent or tremendous. This is one of the noble names of Allah that's abstracted from the Arabic word Azama. Azim is abstracted from the word Azama, which means magnificence or greatness. 
And this is belongs to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the Azim fi thatihi. He is the most great in his self, in his names, and his attributes. And in all of his legal verdicts. When we talk about the magnificence of Allah, the Azamatullah, wa that him being Al Azim, this is all is a reference to he is magnificent, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in himself, in his names, and his attributes. And in all of his legal verdicts. They are tremendous and magnificent. Likewise, in his rewarding, jaza'i, his rewarding of his creation. Because of the jalalati, have the ism, the magnificence of this name of Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say in his ruku'ah, he used to say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Glory and far from imperfection is my Lord al Azim, the most great. He would say that in his ruku'ah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has been established for us in the hadith of Hudayfa, narrated by Imam Muslim, rahimahullahu ta'ala. And that when the Prophet used to make dua to Allah in Qarb or Qurubat in severe trials and tribulations in life that he would make the dua in those tribulations mentioning this name of Allah Al Azim because Allah is the one who's Azim in his jaza'i how he recompenses and rewards he would say La ilaha illallah Al Azim Al Halim that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Al Azim, the most great, Al Halim, the most forbearing. Rabbu Samawati Wal Ard, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, Wa Rabbu Al Aush Al Azim, and the Lord of the tremendous throne, the great throne. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's Messenger, Alayhi Sallatu Salam, He used to say this dua, and for a side note and benefit, you will find almost in every dua. Under severe trials and tribulations, you will hear Tawheed in it. Because Tawheed removes hardships so it lightens the burdens of hardships in life. So for that reason, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in every dua, you might even mostly see the word La ilaha illallah in it. Or some aspect of Tawheed of Allah, making Tawheed of Allah singling out Allah alone. Because that's the means to get Allah to remove you from what you're upon. Or to lighten the burden of it. Where it almost like it's not even a burden on you whatsoever. As an example of that, when the Messenger of Allah was in one of the battles, and their companions started to feel like that they was going to be overwhelmed by their enemies, Allah caused them to fall into sleepiness. And they fell asleep. In a slight sleep. And the ulama of tafsir of this ayah from Surah to Ali Imran have said, that no one feels this state of sleepiness except they must first have a feel comfortable and, not, and no fear is in them. No one in a state of fear is able to sleep. So this Allah removed the fear from them in that severe trial, whereas he kept it, they may have been conquered by their enemy. So understanding the virtues of the Tawheed, that we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sunnah of the messenger of Allah and in the Quran in the supplications of severe trials and tribulations and any book of dua you go on the duas and the trials and tribulations you're going to find tawheed in every one of those duas and this is a tremendous affair and this ayah ends with this and then the author rahimahullah he goes into enumerating several names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he begins and this is we're going to cover for today is talking about our belief in Allah's names and attributes which is a, is the one of the greatest aspects of a tawheed and he begins with saying al alam saying that Allah is al alam al khabir the most knowledgeable and the all knowing he's enumerating attributes of names of Allah but however the ulama have said that it would have been more preferable that he says Alim instead of Alim. Because we find the name, perhaps he meant to say this. Alimul Khabir is mentioned in the Quran. That Allah Ta'ala, when you see these two names together, is only in two verses in the Quran. But the word Alim comes numerous times. And as far as the name 
of Allah being called Alam is not a name of Allah, but it's an attribute of Allah. It's a sifa of Allah. Laysa ismu min asma illa alam. Huwa sifa min sifatillah. No one from the scholars of the past said that these are one of the names of Allah, but it's one of the attributes of Allah. Al Alim. Alim. But would have been preferable for the author to have said Al Alimu. Al Alimu Al Khabir. Because this comes in the Quran in this fashion. Allah mentions that in Surah to uh Tahreem in the beginning, what is a sarran nabiyu ila ba'di azwajihi. To the end of that verse, Allah says, Al Alim al Khabir. When he says, and remember when the Prophet وسلم, said to one, some of his wives, he took secret conversation with her. And this is referring to Hafsa. He took secret conversation with her. وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا And when the Messenger of Allah took secret conversation with some of his wives, right? وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ عَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَأَعْرَضَ عَنْ بَعْضُ That she, the Prophet kept, told her to keep it a secret. And she went and informed some another one of his wives, Aisha radiallahu anha. And Allah informed the Messenger of Allah of this. And he dealt with her with some of it, of what she didn't he left her on the rest of it. And when the Prophet had informed her of what she had 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 went and informed of his other wife of his private conversation with her, she couldn't believe the Prophet knew. She said, Men she said, as Allah mentions, who informed you of this? Who told you that I did this? He said, had informed me, Al Alim, the most knowledgeable, Al Khabir, the most knowing, the all knowing. So here Allah mentioned it there. And this is the name of Allah. In the second place you find these two names, Al Alim and Al Khabir. Mentioned together, you never see Alim and Khabir mentioned together. You see Al Alim Al Khabir mentioned together. Only in two places in the Quran. The second place is in Surah Al Nisa. Is in Surah Al Nisa, where Allah Taala says, talking about when two spouses are fighting between one another, and He says, "Wa in khiftum shikaka bainihima," that if you fear. Splitting and schisms between the two of them. فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا وَحَكَمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ Send an arbitrator from his family and an arbitrator from her family. And then to the end of that verse, Allah Ta'ala mentions, He is Al-Alim Al-Khabir. That he will rectify between the two of them through this if he want rectification. And that he's Al-Alim Al-Khabir. So this, we find, is preferable to say that when you find the word alim, the all knowing, the most knowledgeable, with al alim is all knowing, with this is more detailed in reference to Allah knowing the details of people issues. This is why those two verses is dealing with the details of scenarios. So Allah used the name al alim, but when Allah subhanahu wa taala talks about general knowledge, He says alimul ghaybi wa shahada. He mentions the word alim when he talks about he is the all, he is the most knowledgeable of the hidden, the unseen, and the witness or that which is seen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned alim in those cases. And these are attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the name of Allah, alim. So we understand, and let's talk about that. What is the difference between an attribute of Allah, sifatullah, or sifatullah wa asma'ullah ma fark bainahuma what is the difference between the name of Allah Allah's names and his attributes does anybody know no answers fadda Attributes, some of them don't, not all of them have names. 
That's right. Our accent. I mentioned this before. The difference between the name and the attribute is that the names of Allah all have attributes. Like Allah is Al Hay, the ever living, right? And He has the attribute of life that's never separated from Him. But not all attributes have names. Have names. Okay? So that's the only difference between the attribute and the name. Now, what we want to talk about next is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. You have those names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, and we want to quote from the ulama in this regard. You have the name the ulama have said, like Sheikh Uthameen and other scholars, that inna min al mufidi jiddan fi bab al fiqh al asma'i husna, that indeed from the very beneficial affairs in regards to the subject matter of having the understanding of, Allah, of the beautiful names of Allah is knowing their categories من حيث معانيها from, from the aspect of their names the meanings of them ودلالاتها and what they in indicate what they indicate which is the attributes of those names وهي تنقسم بهذا الاعتبار إلى عدة أقسام and they are categorized in this consideration into numerous cat into numerous categories the first category barakallahu fikum is those names that has attributes cuz remember we said all the names of allah has attributes right but not all the attributes of allah have names so we talking about the names of allah the names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all have attributes and those attributes are number one those attributes that are specifically connected to the self of Allah sifat al they call them in Arabic those attributes that is related to the self of Allah meaning it never separates from Allah it never separates from Allah like Allah is for example al hay the ever living all living that never separates from him al alim the all knowing the most the, all, the most knowledgeable that's never separated from Allah. As Samir, the all hearing. Al Basir, the all seeing. These qualities never separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Qawi, the all powerful. Al Ali, the most high. He's never will ever anything be above Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. Al Aziz, the Almighty. The Almighty. There's nothing more mightier than Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. Al Qadir, for example. The all powerful, all capable. There's nothing that will have more capability over Allah Ta'ala. So these are you at the names of Allah that's related to the self of Allah, and they never separated from Allah. They will always be with Him. As a relation to understand that your features are always with you. How do I know out of by looking at him from Nordin? I know them because they have qualities that are constantly with them, will never separate from them. Okay? We call that sifat to that. Then you have those qualities, which is related to the second category. Um, you have those attributes, that is the second category. Are those attributes that is indicative to an action, attribute of action. Meaning it's connected to the will of Allah. If he wants, he do it. And if he wants, he don't. Like, for example, that which is Allah being a razaq the provider. He provides for him and he don't sometimes. That's connected to his mashia, to his want, his willing. So those attributes is different than the attributes that's related to the self of Allah. These are the same thing with us. Sometimes you're angry. Sometimes you are happy. Sometimes you are merciful. Sometimes you punish. Those are attributes that we have that some is related to what we want and will. We will to be that way sometimes and we will not to be that way sometimes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying for Allah ta'ala except of course his is perfect. We call that sifatul fi'liya. The attributes of his actions of what related to his mashia. His will, what he wills, what he wants to do sometimes, as the ulama have said, 
هي التي تتعلق بالمشيئة إن شاء فعلها وإن شاء لم يفعلها. It's connected to the willing of Allah. If He wants, He will do it, and if He doesn't, and you got several names of His that are like that, like being a Razak, the one who constantly provides, a Tawab, the one who shows repentance, Al Ghafur, the most often forgiven, Al Rahim, the most merciful. This is one of the difference between the name of Allah, Al Rahman. This is Sifat al Zatiya. And Ar Rahim, that's related to the actions of Allah, where sometimes He shows mercy on some, and other times He punishes. Like this. So these are examples of understanding that reality. Allah being, for example, Al Khaliq, the Creator. As Allah Ta'ala says, Yakhluqu ma yasha. He creates whatever He wants. He creates whatever He wants. That's related to His willing. Allah wallahu yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab and some he provides for without no rending to their provisions and others he restrict that's under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is what we understand about the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is important for us to understand these qualities of Allah and understand and then you have those names of Allah that combines the both. Where it's always a part of him, but sometimes he will to implement it in his creation or he doesn't. Like for example, Rahma, his mercy. They fall into both, can fall into both categories. As an example of that. So it's important for us to understand that. And the ulama in this category they say, you got asma'un dalatun ala tanzih. You got names of Allah that in the fourth category that Allah Taala frees himself from imperfection, imperfect uh, qualities that's not related to his perfection. He gives himself names that's related to his holiness as the name Al-Quddusu. Al-Quddusu, the one who is holy and free. As-Salam, the one who's As-Salam. Full of peace and safety and security. He's free from anything that's not perfect. Deficiencies. So you have the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have the names of Allah that are connected to have the meaning of other names. It's one name but it's inclusive to several of Allah's names. As the scholars say, Asma'u dal ala jumlati awsafi adida la ala ma'an al mufrad. You have those names of Allah that is in his meaning is connected to many other meanings. And it's not one single meaning in it of itself. So Allah wa ta'ala have these names like this that we understand as Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah that we believe in. And that we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Alim, Al Khabir, the all knowing. He's Al Mudabbid. And the author says he's the author says he's the Mudabbid, the arranger, which is not a name of Allah. Mudabbir is from the attributes of Allah The one who manages and, and the universe and the, the creation As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says In uh, Surah Al-Sajda Yudabbiru al-amr Bayna min as ila al-ard That he is the one who arranges The affairs From the heavens to the earth From the heavens To the earth Thumma ya'ruju ilayhi Min yawma fi yawman and then Allah Ta'ala says is raised up to him the deeds in a day that is equivalent to a thousand years from that which you, you enumerate. So Allah Ta'ala is establishing that this is from his attributes, his sifat, his qualities and attributes that's connected to his fi'liyah, his, 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 his actions. And this is what we understand as Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. Inshallah, hold the questions for afterwards, after the then, um, because we want to finish um, this affair. And Allah Ta'ala mentions He's Al Qadir, the All Powerful, meaning Qudratullahi Shamila Husnu Taqdir, that the capability of Allah and His estimating of all things is all inclusive to estimating everything in the creation and in the universe. You want to call the then? You call it 8.35, you call it? Or what time is it called? Huh? Okay, Fabla. Allah, 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 Allah,
for the last minute so the point brothers and sisters in learning these attributes and names of Allah is to see the perfection in Allah not just generally understand them but know them in detail more specific way so that it can lead to more servitude to Allah so it can lead to more magnifying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives so when Allah ta'ala tells us that he's the arranger of the affairs that we understand if we want things better for ourselves, we turn to Him. And then only turn to the creation and that which they have capability to aid us in. But we always ask Allah, that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, That whenever you seek help, seek help from Allah. And when you're going to ask, ask of Allah. And we should be like this, even if it's in those areas where we can ask to creation and that which they're capable of helping us in. Or see aid in people in your creation that which they able to help us in, we should first ask Allah. Because it is Him who gave them that ability to aid you. This is why we return, we learn these attributes and qualities of Allah, because we unlearn from them that no one is able to bring harm or repel harm from us or to bring benefit to us except Allah. No one is able to repel harm and to hinder the benefit except Allah. So that's why when the creation that happens, we're able to accept it better. We're able to handle his burden better because Allah did it for some wisdom that we may know or may not know. But we accept that because who are you? Dabbirul Amr. He is the arranger of the affairs. Mina sama'i il ard From the heavens to the earth. And like this, he is the one who has full capability. If someone you don't give you, ask Allah. Then you know if you don't get it, Allah don't want you to have it. Not yet at least Don't mean you stop asking But you know you don't have it Because Allah didn't want it for you If someone gives you And Allah allowed that You won't be over grateful And over thankful to that person You'll be over great You'll be thankful and grateful to Allah To better go ta'ala Because he is the one Who afforded that thing for you This is why the belief is a Muslim When we study it and understand it It protects us from Over rejoicing or being over grieved Over rejoicing over what good that comes to us Or over grieving over what has passed us by And what wasn't meant for us That that belief in our Lord Help saves us from this Over being overwhelmed by uh, Severe trials and tribulations in this life Because what was meant for us Allah willed it What never was going to What didn't happen to us Was not meant to happen to us And that we accept that what has passed us by was never going to reach us at that time And whatever has reached us, it wasn't going to pass us by And we believe that As I love to tell the story, and I just end with this point Was that the great prince Who was brought from Burkina Faso From Africa He was a prince He was stolen as a slave and brought to the lands of the, the, the rivers of Mississippi and he became a slave And he escaped from his owner And he flung, fl he gone for weeks into the woods of Mississippi Trying to find his way back And he realized there's no way back He's stuck in his situation And then he began to remember his education And belief in Qadr wa Qadr And how we're in believing in the decrees of Allah The good of it and the bad of it What Allah decrees And he began to reflect over that belief 
and it helped him accept what was meant for him. So he went back to his owner, couldn't speak a bit of English. He knocks on the door and they thought they lost him because he'd been gone for over two weeks in the woods. He comes back, knocks on the door and he lay down, the little daughter answered the door. He lays down on the ground and takes the little girl's foot and places it on his neck so they can understand that he's, he's defeated and you have full control over me. Because in his culture, whenever the enemy would defeat them, they would do that to let them know we surrender. Whereas here in America, we put up a white flag to show our enemies we surrender. But this is what they did, so he couldn't communicate, so he did that. And he accepted Allah's decree. And wallahi, this quality and attribute is a very important quality and attribute of the believer to have that only the belief and knowing Allah's names and attributes and knowing Allah's commands and prohibition will arrive, cause you to arrive at this belief and give you a level of contentment and happiness where you will be a believer who will never grieve, who will never be miserable in this life. But, and this is something more so we direct towards the women because the women tend to be the ones who have a problem with what Allah decreed. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough this. I want more. It's not to say you can't strive for that. But if you allow that to depress you and sadden you because you don't have, you have a problem with what Allah has decreed for you. It's not to mean you can't strive for it, but you accept and what Allah has decreed for This is my decree This is what Allah wants for me And I love it because Allah wants it for me But it don't mean you can't strive for more Because you don't know what's in your future But for us right now you accept it And this is the way of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah Hatha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik Ala nabiyyana Muhammadin Wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa akhiru da'wana An alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen InshaAllah after that we pray You can have questions if you have any Assalamu alaikum